How's it going folks? It's Rob here. About eight and a half, nine months ago, I popped a single Chinese water chestnut corm into each of these two root pouches over there and then grew them out in a 500 litre pond. Normally when I've grown them in the past, I've overcrowded them, put too many corms, I think, into the containers. We've used bathtubs, half barrels and also styrofoam boxes. So that's why this time around I only popped one corm into each container just to see if we can grow some of the larger ones. The last couple of harvests we've had pretty small corms so thought it was worth a shot. Uh, these guys, they are a water loving plant, hence growing them out in the ponds. But because they are a water loving plant too, when it comes time to harvest them, they can be rather messy. So a couple of weeks ago, I pulled out these two pouches and I've just had them sitting on the ground, just draining out any excess water. So what I'll do is I'll set up the wheelbarrow and grab my compost screen and we'll sort through the soil and see what sort of a yield we're gonna get. So what I'm going to do, to begin with is just cut back any of the foliage on the top here. We've got some Kangkong in here, but I'm not too worried about keeping that. We've got some in the um, aquaponics that'll come back. With these root pouches, one thing I have found is that even though they do air prune, the roots come to the outside and they air prune off, some of the roots will grab on to the inside of the pouch. So what I like to do is just grab my little garden knife here and just run around the outside carefully trying not to poke a hole in the pouch itself and that just releases the roots from the inside of the pouch oh that one's actually hit a corm well, I haven't cut it here we go that's the top layer at least so we'll tip this over it's definitely matted in there well and truly so these pouches can be a little bit difficult to harvest plants like this from. So I'm just going to peel it back. Nice adaptation would be a little um, Velcro opening so you could unpeel them. But also too, because these roots are so fibrous, it doesn't help the cause either. So it looks like the um, Kangkong is pretty much all taken over this pouch by the look of it. There we go. Took a bit of time, but we got there in the end. Now, most of these roots, there's a couple of corms, small ones here. Most of these roots are going to be from the Kangkong. So I actually fear that they may have taken over this pouch and robbed the majority of the nutrients. So I'll just have to slowly break this apart and see. Not many water chestnuts at all so far. This is very disappointing. Good to see the compost worm still survived in there. Pop you straight through, hey matey. So I'm just going to remove this clump here and put it to one side. And we'll shake out this soil and see what we can find. Pull out all these Kangkong roots and bits of reed and more compost worms. Uh, it doesn't look like we missed too many chestnuts there. A couple of small ones and that's about it. As you can see the bulk of this is just <laughs> Kangkong roots so Definitely won't be putting them in there next season, that's for sure. So I might just blast this one with the hose just to see if I can find any more corms up there in the centre. So there's a bit of a precautionary tale for you. Don't put Kangkong in with your water chestnuts because this thing has just taken over the um, soil. And yeah, I didn't find very many chestnuts in there at all. Just these two here, so. Ah, slightly disappointing, but you get that. You live and you learn. Another compost worm. All right, we'll just sift this lot of soil. A few more extras in this lot. So that's it for the pouch that had the Kangkong in it. Hopefully the next one will do a little bit better. So I've already trimmed the leaves off of this one. I'll just run the knife around the outside. 
I've also dropped this one on the uh, ground a few times just to loosen up the soil inside it. <laughs> Figured that'd make it a bit easier. So this one's got corms right up on the surface. Hopefully this one will be a little bit easier to pull out because he's not jam-packed full of kangkong roots. Definitely think some sort of opening in the sides will make this job a lot easier. And we're almost there. There we go. Whoops, a couple of nuts have already flown over the side. I think this one's going to give us a slightly bigger yield just looking at that. So I'm just going to break up this clump and then we'll sift out all this excess soil. Let's grab a new bowl. Just to give you a bit of a look at how these guys grow. There's the stems up there, the stem section that grows the green reeds. Then down below, these corms are attached to the root. And then the little shoot comes out the side and they end up sort of reaching towards the sun like that. So you can see how they're sort of twisted around a bit. So that's pretty much all how they grow off the uh, roots of their mother plant. I'm taking these small ones off as well but we won't be keeping them um, to eat. They're a little bit too small and fiddly. They'll be used to propagate future crops. Might just give this a bit of a shake, hey? There we go. Oh my, <laughs> a lot better. So I'm just gonna collect all these guys now and then we'll clean them up. I'll have a bit of a weigh in. So the corns have been washed and I've just had them sitting in these little sieves for a little while um, just to try and dry out a bit so we're not weighing water. Now, there's a lot of these small ones in here that I'm not even going to bother weighing because they're something I wouldn't peel. I mean, I have peeled them as small as that, but I pretty, yeah, I won't weigh those guys up. There's a couple there. So that looks like about the only ones I'd probably end up processing. And we ended up with 308 grams of water chestnut. This one here, of course, is from the water chestnut that was grown with the Kangkong. So not that impressive at all. I'd say these are pretty much all the largest corms. So yeah, unfortunately a lot of these smaller ones, I mean they're just too fiddly to try and peel. So they'll just be put to one side. So yeah, 307 grams. That's all we got from the first pouch. Just pop them back in there. Now the second pouch, this is what came from just the straight water chestnut pouch. And again, there's a few small ones in here I might just pick out that I included that probably shouldn't. Just trying to make this all fair. Actually, I'll pull him out because he's got a split in him. So I'll just weigh these guys up. Oops, and the others I just dropped. There's just the few others I dropped. So 968 grams. So that's actually not a bad little harvest at all. Uh, these, of course, are from the root pouch that just had the water chestnuts in them. And you'll notice that there's a greater quantity of these larger chestnuts. And the larger they are, the easier they are to peel. Pretty impressed with the harvest we got from that second pouch. And that first pouch has taught me a lesson. When you're growing water chestnuts, just grow them by themselves. So the next pouches are going to the little pond behind me here. Uh, they'll be just four pouches, I'm thinking around about the same size, just with a single water chestnut in each, and we'll see how they go. As for planting these guys out, in the past, I do think I have overcrowded them, and that's why this year I've only planted the single corm into both pouches. Uh, all my future plantings will be exactly the same, one corn per container or per pouch. A bathtub, I might put three in a bathtub. In a broccoli box, I'd put no more than, yeah, probably one. I'd still only go with one in a little foam broccoli box if you were going to use one of them. In one of the larger half barrels, I'd probably put two corms. As for improving the yield, I think I could have got away with a few more regular feeds on the pouches themselves, either, either by sprinkling some organic-based uh, pelletized chicken manure or cow manure over the top of the soil through the season. I didn't like to put a, too many liquid-based fertilizers in there because it would have just run through the pouch and I've got fish in there, so I didn't really want to disturb the fish or risk poisoning them too much. But yeah, as something with a little bit more um, oomph may have helped it out. I just don't think my compost was, you know, up to scratch 
enough nutrients in there to grow these plants all season. So it'll be something I'll be thinking about before planting the next lot out. As for the next crop, I'm pretty much all going to plant out these guys here. They're roughly around about 20 centimetres or three quarters of an inch across. That's all you really need to um, start off the next crop. Just because you plant something small doesn't mean you're going to get small corms. You will get large ones as well. So water chestnuts are great in that respect. I probably wouldn't uh, plant out these tiny ones though. Just mainly these, these guys, slightly larger, have a bit more energy in them. So they'll get you off to a flying start. So I just brought you up into the kitchen to show you how I'm preparing these little fellas. I'm nipping off the top with a sharp knife and then running around the outside with our potato peeler trying not to cut too deep these guys have got a little brown halo that sits roughly around about half a mil under the skin of the chestnut so I'm trying not to go too much deeper than that once they're all cleaned off I'm popping them into a bowl of water after they're all done I'm just going to slice them up and then I'll be freezing them on trays and then from there later they'll go into a larger container so I still have a pouch of duck potato or arrowhead in the pond there. I really need to pull it out, separate some of the plants that have shot from the corms we didn't harvest and yeah, pop them in there again and have a bit of a taste test of the other mature corms. So that's something I'll get to down the road in the next week or so. So that's about it for our water chestnut harvest for 2016. If you've enjoyed the clip, hit that little subscribe button up there and you'll get a notification whenever we post a clip to our little backyard farming channel here on YouTube. And you can come along, say good day, and leave a comment down below if you feel like it. I do hope everyone enjoyed the clip and you are well and happy and I will see you next time. Cheers folks!